Tonight on Man Alive, heroes return. Novelists Joseph and Zdena Skvorsky visit Czechoslovakia after two decades of exile. It's open. It's a miracle. You can go back. Out of this modest house in downtown Toronto, novelist and Nobel Prize nominee Joseph Skvorsky and his wife Zdena Salavarova have run 68 publishers, a Czech language publishing house specializing in the works of writers that were forbidden in Czechoslovakia. The Skvoretskys left Prague in the wake of the Russian occupation and have not returned. And now, after 22 years, they're welcomed back as heroes. thoughts flow, I conjure up again the many wonderful things I have seen in this country of cities with no past. Like the Toronto skyline with its black and white skyscrapers glowing like burnished chessboards against the evening twilight. The Toronto skyline is more beautiful to me than the familiar silhouette of Prague Castle. There is beauty everywhere on earth, but there is greater beauty in those places where one feels that sense of ease which comes from no longer having to put off one's dreams. Joseph Skvoretsky has lived with his wife in Toronto since 1969 without hope that they would ever go home again. With the events in Eastern Europe of the autumn of 1989, everything changed. Criminals in the eyes of the Czech government in November by February, they were visited by its new president. Suddenly, their quiet little publishing house was transformed by the invasion of Canadian security police and hordes of Czech media. The publishing house was a labor of love. They lived on Joseph's professor's salary from the University of Toronto and on the proceeds from the English translations of his novels. Among the forbidden authors they published was the man visiting them today. Václav Havel, the playwright dissident who was swept into the presidency of Czechoslovakia, made a special stop on his visit to North America. Havel came to pay tribute to the Škvoreckis and to extend an invitation for them to visit when they came to Prague in April. Can you imagine? We've been living here for 21 years. We never thought, never even flirted with the idea that we would go back home. And now it's open, it's a miracle, you can go back and people are expecting us there, friends are preparing surprises and events. It's still like a dream. He's I'm so not as emotional calm. as my wife, you know. My main concern is that uh, I, I had been a very popular writer in Czechoslovakia and we were still living there. And somehow this popularity didn't disappear entirely because, you know, we managed to smuggle books into the country. And I had this regular book reviews on the Voice of America in the Czech language. So, uh, so I'm still present in a way. And now they have started a fan club for me, you know, the Society of Josef Škuretsky. And that's what I am concerned about, that uh, there will be too much expectation. I don't feel at ease in the role of a sort of personality cult, you know. Skvoretsky is best known for a cycle of novels where the main character is a teenager named Danny in a small town in Nazi-occupied Bohemia. The setting and the characters bear more than a passing resemblance to Skvoretsky and his friends, to their hometown, their love of girls, and their passion for playing jazz. Airport, the 23rd of April. Along with the press and television cameras have gathered friends and family 
who haven't seen the Škvoreckis in 22 years. Já jsem s ní mluvila minulý týden. A to jako všechno bylo normální. A ona potom říká, ale nechoď na letiště, tam bude blázinec, já se ti nebudu moc věnovat. A já jsem říkala, blázinec, neblázinec, já se zařídím, jen se neboj. To není vůbec pravda. The Shkvoretsky's visit to Czechoslovakia is for an exhibit of their books organized by the Canadian Embassy. They're coming back as Canadian citizens, guests of the Canadian ambassador, arriving in a country ready and willing, and perhaps needing, to welcome them back as heroes. In the heart of Prague on Wenceslas Square, there is an impromptu monument to the Velvet Revolution of November 89. On this spot, countless candles were lit to St. Václav and all the martyrs of Czech history as beacons of hope to the turning tide of events. It was here that hundreds of thousands gathered, night after night, to bring the country to a grinding halt and force the communist government to resign. It is here that the Škvoreckis wished to stop before anywhere else. The exhibition of the works of 68 publishers is set to take place at the National Museum of Literature in Prague. The Skvoretskis managed to publish 216 titles, most of which were smuggled in and passed from hand to hand like some latter-day gospels. In Czech culture, the writer has a much more exalted position than in the West. The role of the writer in Czechoslovakia or in Bohemia traditionally was that of not just a writer but also a sort of spokesman for the nation, an educator and politician and so on. It comes from the uh, 19th century when the nation was so very down that the only cheer came from the writers and uh, intellectuals. So intellectuals are expected to know everything, to solve every problem. It was certainly not Havel's ambition to become a politician, but he's a man of integrity and courage. And there are not that many of that kind there. So it's nothing new, unfortunately. The Viola Jazz Club on National Street. Skvoretsky has returned to an old haunt with the new mayor of Prague. His previous job was as a translator of English literature. In the wake of the Velvet Revolution, Havel and the Civic Forum drafted people for leadership positions from the ranks of those they trusted, the writers, intellectuals, and artists. In the late night hours, these leaders of the new democracy can often be found here, listening to this, the most democratic type of music. Jazz and rock and roll and all these types of syncopated music are spontaneous creations, you know. There is no author, there is no one single person who would create the first 
blues or the first folk, uh, jazz or whatever, it's spontaneous, you know, and Elvis Presley gets himself a guitar and starts playing it and somehow he creates something that is spontaneous and then it spreads and then it becomes professional and all that. And you know, all dictatorships, totalitarian dictatorships, cannot live with spontaneous, uh, anything that is spontaneous because they want to, to govern, to plan everything. In a few weeks' time, the first free elections in over 40 years will take place. The Civic Forum mounts an exhibition of old communist propaganda that turns the last 40 years of history into bitter satire and all the old Stalinists in the cardboard cutouts on the construction wall. In a society where uh, you have strict censorship, uh, daily papers and uh, magazines are uninteresting because they cannot do what daily papers are supposed to do, that is, address themselves to the problems of the moment. But you know, a novelist in such societies always has, has indirect ways how to express certain things. That's what they call writing between the lines and reading between the lines. So he substitutes for the daily press. And if he's a really good writer, he doesn't even have to write about the burning issues of the times. He simply creates a picture of the human soul, which is so Im impressive and so true that people like him because they feel that he's telling them something that they cannot find anywhere else in that society. May 2nd, the opening of the exhibit of 68 publishers is the place to be in Prague that day. 
The most touching moment comes at the official ceremony. After the speeches, the Shkoretskis are serenaded by an old friend who has come out of retirement for the occasion. Pořád brečím v té Praze. To je Nicméně, musím vám říct, jak jsem šťastná, že jsme se sem dostali zpátky. My jsme v to nedoufali vůbec. My jsme tam žili jako opravdu odstrčený, vykopnutý trosečníci. A jsem hrozně ráda, že jsem zpátky a že můžu tady být s váma. The Škvoretskis gave dozens of talks throughout the country to a public whose appetite for their words seemed at times insatiable. At the Reading Institute for the Blind, they answered the question that was asked wherever they went. <laughs> Už tam žijem 21 let, ta Kanada je krásná, zachovala se k nám velice krásně, že My jsme v Kanadě nikdy neměli pocit, že by nás někdo diskriminoval, protože jsme nějaký cizinci, že máme přízvuk a tak dále. Tam se začne ta velice brzy cítit velice doma, víte, až to jsou hodní lidi. A samozřejmě v duchu jste taky doma, až vzpomínáte, že jo. A čtete české knižky, zejména my jsme byli v té dobré situaci, že jsme pořád se zabývali českými knihami, že jo, rukopisama a tak. The office of the President of Czechoslovakia. For their publishing work, the Škvoretskis received the Order of the White Lion, the highest honor that can be given to foreigners for service to the Republic. And this work was extremely important because it helped to maintain the continuity of not only Czech and Slovenian literature, but it helped to maintain a spiritual continuity, a national memory. Opravdu to bylo důležité pro jakési duchovní přežití národa, proto se jim dostává takové pozornosti při jejich první návštěvě po dlouhé době v Československu. Proto dostali dneska i nejvyšší vyznamenání, protože společnost si význam této jejich služby uvědomuje.
After all the ceremonies and speeches in the major cities, the Skorotskys arrive in Joseph's hometown of Nachad, the setting for many of his novels. When his first book, The Cowards, was published in 1949, many of the townsfolk recognized themselves and were outraged. Skvoritsky received anonymous, threatening letters. Now, 40 years later, his old friends, many of them characters in his novels, have a party in his honor. Among the guests is Marie, one of Joseph's teenage loves, and one of the major unrequited love interests in the novels. You know, in my inner vision somehow, she reappeared as I used to know her. That's now 50 years ago almost, you know. And she was a very slim, beautiful girl. And the basic feeling is still there because, you know, the, the person whom you loved so much as I did love her so many years ago embodies something, you know, encapsules time. I really felt like I was again, you know, 17, talking to her intensively, which I did. We talk mostly about her daughter because she has a daughter who is now about 32. I've never met the daughter, but I saw her, so she sent me her photograph. And judging by that photograph, she was a, you know, just her image, you know. A coach tour. The mayor and civic forum members of Nachad have climbed onto a bus with the Skvoritskys to spend a Sunday afternoon touring some of the sites of Joseph's novels and showing them the changes that are going on in the countryside. Among the most profound changes is the restoration of the village churches to the forefront of spiritual life. to St. Peter's in Rome and in many other famous churches and big, great churches, but I somehow never had that religious, intensive religious feeling as I have in places like this one. Because here, you know, this is a church built by a local farmer's family. This was not endowed by the church or by some aristocrat. So this is a place where you feel that people who came here to worship are very serious about it. Uh, so I think this is where I, um, if I had any religious faith, I suppose I got it from places like this. the old Gothic town hall in Nachab, and the ceremony honoring the Skvoritskys. Josef Škvorecký, náchodě 27. července 1945. Nejvíce jste své rodné město proslavil románem z Babělci. A to nemyslím tak, že jste pohoršil někdejší politickou literární kritiku a některé spoluobčany, kteří nepochopili své bytnost uměleckého díla. Proslavil jste naše město životností své tvorby. Sepstal jste významnou kapitolu jeho duchovních dějin. Díky za to. Díky za příklad. Vážený mistře, pane doktore Škvorecký, brány našeho města pro vás i pro vaši paní jsou stále do kořán. Brány města i našich srdcí.
That evening, there was a big gala in the theater in Nachad. Marie brought her daughter, and they sat shyly a few rows back as Joseph and his Dana answered questions from a packed house. And there was, of course, jazz with a special guest artist. The mayor, it turned out, blew a mean saxophone. After the show, the musicians jammed, while the Skvoritskis gladly signed another couple of hundred books. A real artist should simply capture the essence of the human situation what it is to be a human being in a given society. And if he manages to do that, then he will be read all over the world. Certain things are absolutely universal. <laughs> 